Hi everyone, this is Richard Byrne at freetechforteachers.com. Earlier this week, I posted an updated guide to using back channels and informal assessment tools in the classroom. One of those tools is Padlet. And I had a couple of people ask some questions about using Padlet and how to set it up. So I thought I'd make a short video here. First thing you do when you go to padlet.com, just click on build a wall. And from here, we could actually just start writing on the wall by double clicking, putting in my name and writing a quick comment and say, this is a sample note. Now we want to adjust some settings in this wall to make it a little bit more appropriate for our classroom use. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over here to modify this wall. And first I'm going to give it a title. I'm just going to call this Mr. Burns class. And I'm going to give a little direction to my students and say, please share one thing that you learned today. Now, the next thing I want to change is I just want to add a little personality to my wall. So let's go ahead and add a little icon. Let's add the monkey icon or gorilla icon. And now we can change the wallpaper, the background. Maybe we'll put it in the the wood look, or if I had my own picture, I could upload my own picture. After that, I want to change the address for my wall. Uh, and the reason for that is, by default, Padlet just assigns a random URL to your wall. And getting all my students to copy this off the board, or copy this down correctly, CV09DQB, uh, that could take a while. So I'm going to go over here to Address. And I'm going to pick a Padlet address. I might say Mr. Burn 21. And that one's available. And I wrote that in all lowercase letters so that we don't have to worry about case sensitivity with my students. And they probably already know how to spell Mr. Burn. So that makes it a little bit easier for my students. The next thing that I want to change is my privacy setting. So let's go ahead and Take a look at my privacy. By default, Padlet makes my wall hidden. And so you'd have to know the exact link in order to find the wall. But if you had that link, you'd be able to find it and you'd be able to write on it by default. I'm going to change this for my classroom to make it a password protected wall. And I'll say, in this case, people who have the password can write on the wall. And I'll just put in a simple password here for my students. I'm going to use password in this example. Uh, so my students will still go to the wall, but in order to write, they're going to have to put in the password. And the other setting that I might use, depending upon the students that I'm working with, is I might moderate the posts. And that will allow me to approve everything or view everything before it goes live on the wall. So now we've set up our wall for classroom use. If I decide I don't like the wall, I can always click delete and get rid of it. And I'm going to hide this doc here. Let's take a look at how we can write some notes. You notice I just clicked and dragged that note into place. And by hovering over it as the owner of the wall, I can delete it. I'm going to double click again. I'm going to say Richard. And I'm going to say, today I learned that I don't like milk in my coffee. And I'm going to add a picture of coffee. So to do that, I'm just going to upload a file. And I can drag and drop a file from my desktop. If I have a picture of coffee, I'll upload that picture. I don't have a picture handy, so I'm just going to go to pixabay.com, which is my favorite source for public domain pictures. I'm going to do a quick search for coffee. And there we, ha there we have a picture. Let's go ahead and grab that little picture. I'm just going to grab the link for it. And because I'm not uploading the file, I'm instead going to link to the file. And there it is. Now it's displayed in the wall. And again, drag and drop. Let's put another note in and I'll just pretend that I'm somebody else and I'll say max 
And today I learned how to multiply by two. And again, we have some options here. When I click on the note, you can see this menu pops up to scroll through all the notes. And if I've included a video, the video will appear in this scrolling display. I'm going to open up my settings again. So down here, I'm going to show the dock. I'm going to modify this wall. I'm going to change the layout. By default, Padlet puts everything into freeform note format. Let's go to the stream format. And now we have everything in a nice linear order. I can even drag and drop and switch those around. And the last setting I want to show you here is the sharing setting for our wall. Let's go ahead and click Share Export. You notice all the ways that we can share this wall, including embedding the wall into a blog post or a, or a web page. And if you embed it into a blog post or a web page, it will still work the same way as it does if you send all your students to Padlet.com. So if you have a classroom blog that your students use on a consistent basis, rather than trying to get them to copy down another URL or click on a link, you could simply embed the wall and they'd be able to double click on it through the blog and write their comments. And of course, we have a QR code down here for sharing the wall as well. So that's Padlet in a nutshell. Give it a shot. I think your kids will like it.